All right. So, time for biomimicry. What time do we have? Oh, that's all. I'm going too quickly. You guys might get out early. I guess we could talk about the test afterwards, right? What? <laughs> Should we go right into biomimicry? Or you guys want a break? All right. Okay. Okay. Now, I will say, I have a little, I have some faith in biomimicry, but I'm going to make some rules. I don't think, I don't want to see you guys doing biomimicry without a really careful study of what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. I don't want you to just put up something on the wall in the studio and say, this is biomimetic. I'm going to go through, that's why we're doing this lecture. So, the imitation of the model, systems, and elements of nature for the purpose of solving complex human problems. Um, and I put this biomimicry here because I put this picture underneath here because you see the structure and this is a nightmare for the construction managers by the way Biomimicry is going to kill you guys because nature does not like a straight line structure It likes curved structures. It likes angles because it's stronger It's stronger. You can get more strength from less material basically the way we build buildings right now uh, orthogonal buildings is completely ridiculous because they tend to rack you know they tend to you ever notice there's always like these angled pieces of steel in buildings that you see through the windows? That's because the wind would knock this building down if there wasn't some reinforcement on an angle. Really, nature would never do this. We would not have these shapes. It's just not logical from a natural point of view. Uh, so let's see, the term biomimicry and biomimics come from the Greek words bios meaning life and mimesis meaning to imitate. It's pretty straightforward so far, right? Often we talk about bionics, bioinspiration, and bio something or other. I don't know what that word means. Here's the one you really have to know. This is the really the important part of it. Um, so you start here in the middle and you identify a problem by developing a design brief. So you guys know when you go to studio, your professor gives you a design brief that tells you what you're supposed to achieve. In biomimicry, you write your own design brief of the human need or the problem. So you, define, you have to define the problem very carefully and very clearly in a biomimetic bio um, answer. And then you have to translate the design brief into biological terms or parameters. So we're kind of here now. So we're coming here. Notice they have a spiral there. It might be too corny. Uh, discover biological, biological models that meet the design brief. So basically whatever problem you have, somewhere in nature it's been solved, including financial problems. Yeah, a lot of people are using biomimicry to solve financial problems. How and why would somebody do that? Think about how things in nature work, right? Nature, energy is extremely valuable in the natural world. Any animal that has energy from food is gonna be very careful with it, right? And they're gonna treat it very carefully, they're gonna use it very sparingly, aren't they? Money's like energy. I'll come back to that. Abstract, identify patterns and create a taxonomy. Can anybody tell me what a taxonomy is? Fancy word for a menu of items that fit within that. So like there are like thousands of butterflies, right? So you line up all your butterflies that's a taxonomy, all the different species. Emulate, develop solutions based on the biological models, review solutions against life's principles, develop a new design brief from questions highlight. So it just keeps repeating. I'm gonna show you guys examples, don't worry. But I think it's important for you to know this process. We do not use this process in studio yet because I'm not completely convinced yet on this, on this stuff. Maybe I'm getting older. <coughs> so biomimicry helps to be sustainable. I didn't make the slide. I'm kind of questioning that. Perform well. What does that mean? If I have a biomimetic building, it's going to perform well? Not necessarily. I'm really getting suspicious, actually. Just because I have a building that, no, it's true. If you have, a, you guys know what a geodesic dome is? Like a dome? A dome will be 15% more energy efficient just based on its shape, its volume to mass, surface area to mass, the volume, not mass, volume. So it's true. I guess it would. Save energy, cut material costs a lot. We have a lot of extra material in these buildings because of all these straight lines. Redefine and eliminate waste. There is no waste in nature, right? Waste is food. Drive revenue. Weird. Okay, life principles. Instruct us to build from the bottom up. So this is where the architects really struggle because as an architect, I look down on the earth and I make my forms and I place them on the earth because that's what I was taught to do. What biomimicry wants you to do is come up through the soil come up through the place and begin to think of what would nature build? If you were building a building, what would nature do? It's, it's really, that's how they want you to do it. So if you have to build an apartment building, 
for 70 people, what would nature build? And that's how you start the, that's really how you start it. Are you willing, who's the architects in here? Architects, are you willing to do that? To let nature tell you what to do? Or would you just want to impose your will upon a site? Self-assemble. These ideas, you ever have a design of a project that just sort of becomes what it wants to be? It has a life of its own, it happens all the time, right? Optimize rather than maximize, I find this very interesting. You're gonna optimize your resources instead of trying to maximize your, humans try to maximize everything, we wanna maximize profit. In nature, they optimize profit. There's a big difference between optimizing profit and maximizing profit. Use free energy, clearly, Right? We should be doing net zero energy buildings, right? I mean, there's no reason why we're paying for water or energy at this point. Cross-pollinate. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> Certainly embrace diversity. This is something that we are not great at. We know that we're stronger and more robust and resilient when we have diversity. Adapt and evolve. Use life-friendly materials and processes. Engage in symbiotic relationships and enhance the biosphere. What if this was our lead rating system? What if at the end of your crit for your building, this is what you were bet, this is what you were vetted on? Pretty powerful stuff actually, isn't it? But you know, we have this thing called ego. I'm a human being. I have to put my mark on the earth. I can't let the earth put its mark on me. I'd have to totally relent. I'd have to give up everything that I was trained to be, which is the top dog. This is not as easy as it looks, by the way. I've seen students try to do it, and they fail usually pretty, pretty much halfway through. Um, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. But this is the really the why we think this is important. Everything that you see in the natural world, whether you like it or not, evolved over 3.8 billion years through trial and error. Trial and error. There is no, unless, well, let me try to avoid a religious discussion. <coughs> I was going to say, uh, uh, putting religion aside for a minute, right, it is self forming, right? It is, it's forming into, it's evolving into something. Always, constantly. Now some people would think that there's a divine presence that's doing that, so we'll, we can talk about that. I don't know, what, maybe that was my red flag. Some people, this is where I get nervous, they say, well let's do biomimicry for business, and I get a little nervous. I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm really not so sure, so I'm going to skip through that. Energy in the natural world is more expensive than in the human world. Plants have to trap and convert it from sunlight. Predators have to hunt and catch it. Anytime something in the natural world gets energy, they treat that energy like it's really valuable. We don't. I know you guys are walking around your house in your t-shirts in the middle of winter and you got the heat way up. I know you do. I know you do. You don't treat your energy very nicely, people. So what if we could do that? You know, when a fish goes out to hunt for food, it's not out in the rapids, is it? So the rapids are here. The fish sits in the little corner in the cove where the rapids are not and they save their energy. They see some food, they dash out, they get it, and they go back. They don't waste an ounce of energy when they hunt. And we don't do that. We're the opposite of that. We use way more energy than we need to do anything. Cut material costs. Nature builds the shape because shape is cheap and material is expensive. And so by studying shapes of nature strategies, how they are built by America, can help minimize the amount spent on materials. I think you guys got that. I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. And then here's where it gets a little funky. They say, well, if you could organize your company around that, then you're probably good. So I'm going to skip through that because I think it's wrong. Okay, listen to client needs and distill challenges. This is the actual process. So that's not new. Biologize. This is where biomimicry comes in. You have to biologize the question. What would nature do? So you're designing a daycare center for 30 kids. What would nature do? Certainly they would have operable windows. You want the kids to be open and closing the windows, right? How many daycares have you been in where they don't have that? A lot. Crazy. Uh, find nature's best practices to emulate and then generate product ideas from those best practices. So nature has all the best practices we need. If you want to clean water, how many, the airport, the Philadelphia airport is built on swamp land. All those swamps that we think are so ugly, they're cleaning all the water for us before it gets into the ocean. So here's an example of uh, an adaptive skin. We're seeing a lot of buildings that have adaptive skins. They know where the sun is, they know where the heat is, they know where it's cool, and the building will change the glass to actually adapt to the environment. What's the matter? You look concerned. Yeah, what's I have no idea. I'm sorry. I did not prepare efficiently. I don't know if it's real. I think it might be a proposal. Okay. I'm not what sure. Just this is the one you were working on? Yes, exactly. You're going to have to come and do a case study for us in class. <laughs> you might have to do that. This is the one that everybody talks about, right? Um, Velcro. 
And you know the story, the guy was hunting with his Irish pointer. I don't know why it's important to say what kind of dog it was. He traveled through some burned burdock thistles and while pulling off the seed burrs from the plants clung to his clothing and the dog, he noticed how they were removable yet easily reattached. Is that, was he thinking I'm gonna be biomimetic? No, he was thinking, hey, I got a great idea here. It happened to be post haste biomimetic. And I think that we over indulge this kind of desire to make everything about, oh, we're biomimetic. No, not really. Now this one is really cool. You guys know about the Eastgate building in um, Zimbabwe? It basically looked at termite mounds and how termite mounds are very cool inside, very cool. And so they said, what if we could design a building based on uh, the technology that termites use? Stop me, please. I just said something that was completely ridiculous. I just said termites don't use technology. They don't have that capability. Okay, I just want to see it. How did, they, no. They, they, what do they do? Well, they, they, they naturally, the natural instinct to, is to create the habitat that they did, and they burned yeah. down, created. But it was instinctual. It wasn't like they had a set of blue plans. They Correct. blue plants it that. It fulfills their needs. I mean, it makes them comfortable. Uh, right. So we should design buildings based on that, right? Their life easier. So we, right now we do buildings based on wants, and we should be doing buildings based on needs, shouldn't we? Or should we not? Anyway, this building gets nine, uses 90% less energy. Anybody been here? <coughs> no? We've got to go visit it. It's in Zimbabwe. It's kind of far Zimbabwe, away. I didn't see this building. It's kind of far away. Is but there, the it says $3.5 million. We're saving air conditioning. Who cares? <laughs> 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 Who cares? Yes, it was expensive to build. Is it cheap to operate? Absolutely. Will it pay itself back? Eh, depends on the cost of energy. Is this beautiful? I find termites to be really not attractive. I don't find this to be beautiful, do you? So much, why not? Why is that not beautiful? It is beautiful. You say it's beautiful, why? Well, you just see these areas of termite mounds, they're very nice. Uh, creepy. Why would it be creepy? It just well, looks no, like a yeah. science, science fiction. Like you fell into it and you <coughs> <laughs> you want them in your house. So basically, the building has a ventilation pattern that's similar. I wish I had more drawings. Of that. I got to find more drawings of that. I just seen this one movie. It just like blew my mind. Yeah, you're watching too much sci-fi. 